This is Echo 3, and welcome as we continue our career mode discussion. Our mission today is to go to EVE. We will not be landing as we have yet to unlock some key research, but we will be orbiting. We have a contract to fly by EVE, but we might as well get as much science out of the mission as possible. We shall start by building a craft capable of getting us there and back safely. I'm going to use the KV-3 re-entry module so we can take three Kerbals on this trip. It doesn't have any reaction wheels or much electrical storage, so we should make sure we take care of those needs, as well as remember some solar panels. I'm also going to use the LVT-91 Cheetah engine. As a 1.8 part, it fits nicely in between the Terrier and the Poodle. Note that these parts are from the Making History DLC. Since we will be visiting a new location, we should load this craft up with as much science as possible. You can see me offsetting parts in and out. That is my attempt to balance the center of mass over the center of thrust. We have a new experiment to use with the magnetometer. And because we have plenty of thrust, I decide to increase the fuel storage for this stage. Then we can put a fairing over our upper stage to keep it more aerodynamic during ascent. The middle stage for our craft will be used to finish our circularization around Kerbin and get us all the way to EVE. I would recommend using one of the online Delta V maps to help design your crafts. I am overbuilding this one, but I like to be a little overprepared. Finally, we can build the ascent stage. The REM3 mainsail does not have quite enough thrust for the first stage, so we'll be adding a couple solid rocket boosters to aid it. I was not paying attention, but the kickback engines have too much mass for this rocket. Our launch pad is only a level 2. In the bottom right of the screen, you can see that the engineering icon goes orange, indicating that we have an issue. But I kept on building. I do remember to strut the boosters to the main stack, and I used the auto strut to grandparent part on almost the entire lower stage of the rocket. Now, when I try to launch the rocket, I notice the mass issue. The rocket is not overweight by too much, so by reducing the fuel levels a little bit, we can solve our issues. You can see I clicked on the engineering report as I made the changes. I'm going to reduce the fuel levels on the solid rocket booster just a little bit, reduce the thrust a little bit, and take a little bit of liquid fuel out of the main tank, and we'll be ready to go. You have probably seen enough rocket launches into low Kerbin orbit by now, so I'm going to speed this up to 8 times normal. I have the Kerbal Engineer readout on the top of my screen, but the stock game makes the orbital parameters visible using the menu on the lower left. By watching these numbers, you can get into orbit without going into the map view and plotting an orbital insertion burn, if you are so inclined. We are able to easily get this rocket into a circular 80 km by 80 km orbit. This would be a good parking orbit from which to make our ejection burn. If our thrust to weight ratio were lower, I would probably want to use a higher parking orbit. Now that we are in orbit, we can plot our ejection burn. Being that we are going to an inner planet, we want to eject Kerbin retrograde to its orbit. In the case of our counterclockwise orbit, that means making the burn on the light side. By consulting the delta V map, I know that it should take about 1060 meters per second of delta V to get from Kerbin to Eve's orbit. So I go ahead and drag the prograde marker out that far. You can see that we're not in a transfer window for EVE at this time. That is when EVE is 54 degrees behind Kerbin. But we are fairly close to the ascending node. I'm going to try to plot an EVE intercept at its descending node. This means I should not have to make a 430 meters per second inclination change. I do take my time in setting up this ejection burn. Maneuvers in orbit around Kerbal can be expensive in terms of delta V, especially near EVE's orbit. Now, we are not going to get an EVE encounter right away. So I'm going to plot a second maneuver where our orbit and EVE's orbit intersect. Here, I'm going to make a retrograde maneuver. By right-clicking on the maneuver node, we can bring up the subsequent orbit buttons. By spending a little extra time, we can get an encounter for very little delta V. Rather than making a 430 meters per second inclination change, we can make a 270 meters per second retrograde maneuver to set up an encounter. This has the added benefit of reducing our relative velocity with EVE. This means our orbital insertion burn will take less energy. In many cases, a typical Hohmann transfer orbit is the most efficient method. But, when there is a large inclination difference between the orbiting bodies, it is not always the most efficient way. There are online tools that let you pork chop plot your transfer burns. You can see my ELU Endeavor video for how to use one of them. In space, high above Kerbal, is a new biome for us, so we should drop out of time warp and gather all the science from here. And, since we brought a scientist with us on this mission, we can reuse our Mystery Goo and Science Junior experiments. I know there are mods that can alert you when you are in a new place to gather science, but I'm not playing with any of them right now. We will have Bob get out, 
and take an EVA report and gather all the science from the experiments. Remember to have Bob take the data from the pod and put it back again so that we can take multiple crew reports. It's a bit of a pain, but in order to take more than one crew report, a Kerbal has to get out, take the data from the pod, and put it back again. Now, we can make our burn and set up our even counter. By right-clicking on the closest approach marker, I can see exactly how close we are getting and make adjustments as necessary. Then, once we have an encounter, we can focus on Eve and see exactly what our encounter will look like. Ultimately, we should get our Eve periapsis into low space, that is, under 400 kilometers from the surface. I regularly have to consult the game's wiki page to find out the different altitudes for what counts as low space and high space, for me anyway. I regularly have to either minimize the game or use my phone to pull up pertinent game information. I keep links on my desktop to important things like the Delta V map. Do you have any tips or useful links that you'd like to share? You can leave me a comment and uh, let me know. Since our middle stage is about out of fuel, we can set up a maneuver to let it deorbit in Eve's atmosphere. Eve's atmosphere extends to 90 kilometers above sea level. We should definitely keep our periapsis above that, because uh, Arrow breaking at Eve is definitely for the bold. After decoupling the middle stage, we can make a small radial outburn to raise our periapsis. Then we can set up an insertion burn to get ourselves into orbit. Our insertion burn will actually take less than 70 meters per second of delta V. While we are in space high above Eve, we should gather science from here. We can conduct all the experiments here that we conducted in space high above Kerbal. Then we can time warp to our capture burn. After our burn, we can then gather the science from low orbit around Eve. And in low orbit, we can actually gather science, uh, you can get an EVA report over every Eve biome that we pass over. So lots of science we can gather in this quick flyby here. And I notice that we didn't quite get into a circular, or we didn't quite get into an orbit yet, so I need to make a small uh, retrograde burn to finish getting us into orbit here. But anyway, we get it and gather all the science from here. Once we finish getting ourselves into a stable orbit, we'll have to start thinking about how to get back to Kerbin because our contract is to fly by Eve and return. So important there uh, to fulfill our contract and get all our funds. Now we are, oh good, lots of science, lots of science. Here's where I realize my mistake and make a small uh, retrograde burn. All right, now an Eve transfer window is when Eve is 36 degrees behind Kerbin. It looks like we're getting close to that transfer window right now. We can watch in map view while we time warp. When exactly is our transfer window? You can make your best guess at 36 degrees, or you can hold a protractor up to the screen, or maybe prefer to use a mod. I have the mod Kerbal Alarm Clock. It is able to keep track of the transfer windows for me and drop the game out of time warp when our launch window opens. With launch windows, you don't have to be perfect as long as you budget a little extra Delta V for emission, you can usually get by okay at just eyeballing the transfer window. If you'd like to be exact, you can use mods or online tools that will calculate the in-game date for your transfer. Here you can see I used Kerbal Alarm Clock. Our highly elliptical, non-equatorial orbit means that we're going to have to play with our maneuver node to find exactly how we should eject Eve to get to Kerbin. Although, in our case, we are in a pretty good orbit to make our ejection burn. Again, I have clicked on the closest approach marker. We can see what makes the encounter closer. Our ejection burn doesn't have to get us an intercept as long as we are able to get a pretty close encounter. We can then make a small second burn to set up our encounter. A mid-course correction burn uh, will be able to set us up with a lovely Kerbin encounter. Like with Eve, we can make a short burn uh, in interplanetary space and set up exactly how we need our encounter to look. You can see I'm eyeballing things here and we're gonna get us a nice low periapsis around Kerbin, at least it's fairly close here. 
I don't want to aero brake. I didn't exactly design the craft with aero braking in mind, so I'm going to attempt to slow down and get us into orbit by making a maneuver at periapsis. And we, yeah, it's pretty close. We're going to be all right. And the lower our periapsis is, the more efficient the capture burn will be, thanks to the Oberth effect. All right. And all we got to do is capture. Well, I'm not really worried about getting into a circular orbit at this point. I'm just going to try and capture. All right, and that actually isn't a very expensive burn. And while we're here, uh, we can actually gather some science. And while we're in high orbit, we can use our exp experiments again. I kind of forgot that I hadn't used the experiment in those situations. Now we're going to get ourselves into a circular orbit so we can decide where we want to land. In this case, I hadn't really decided where I want to land yet. And, oh, there we go. Home sweet home with Kerbin. And it looks like we're going to be able to land... You know what? If we wait one more orbit, I think we can land near the desert launch site. Now, I'm using a mod called Trajectories that can more accurately plot where you're going to land on a planet. It accounts for the planet's rotation and the atmosphere. So if you have access to mods, it is definitely one of the better ones to have. It's even useful for making uh, air braking maneuvers and helping you know what to do there. Hey, uh, you know what? The desert is a new biome. We should remember to gather the science from here. And we can EVA report while we're coming down and then we'll gather the science once we land and recover our pod. And we have netted lots of science from this mission and about a million funds. Well, looks like we're in good shape. Where should we go next? You can leave a comment with your ideas. Thanks for joining me to discuss career mode.